Good morning, friends. I'm Jen at the Sunshine Farm. Chris is going to be joining us in just a minute. And I apologize for the squintiness. It is so gloriously sunny out. I have to squint because my eyes are so sensitive with the sun, which would surprise you because I am actually from Southern California where there is lots of sun and I was always squinting. That's bright. So this is my, um, my what are you to me? Your husband. I think. <laughs> this is my uh, husband, Chris. And today we are going to be talking to you guys about what we would tell our younger selves. We are gonna bring you along with us to tap some maple trees because even though it looks really cold out with the snow on the ground, temperatures are going to be getting above 30 during the days, which means it is the perfect time to tap those trees. My sweet friend Rose at Wholesome Roots tagged us in this collaboration and I was so excited she did because I thought no one would think of us for this because Chris and I are some of the youngest homesteaders in this YouTube community in our mid-20s, 24 and 25. So I really didn't think anyone would tag us in this and I'm excited they did because no matter how old you are, you always have something to learn. And I think this collaboration is all about what you've learned and how you want to share a message to others about those lessons learned along the way. This collaboration was started by Lorella, not a farm girl. I'm going to link her channel in the description below so you can head on over to the playlist and watch a bunch of other fun videos that went along with this collaboration. So I am over here at one of our maple trees and I'm excited to get some maple syrup from this guy. My personality is to really strive to be the best I can be in whatever area that is and growing up I was really striving to be the best musician I could be. I was a singer-songwriter, learning guitar and piano and songwriting and singing and doing all of that. And I think in some ways that was a great thing, right? It allowed me to get in touch with my creative self, uh, an outlet for writing out my feelings and emotions into songs, also building a lot of confidence through performing. But in some ways, I think I became too narrow-minded in life and who I was because I became so focused on that identity and having to have this like clear trajectory of where I was going. And as I've gotten older, <laughs> older, I know to some of you that sounds silly, but as I've um, become an adult, I have realized that life is not about going in a straight line. It's about, you know, taking curves in different directions and different routes and finding yourself and finding things you love that you didn't expect and embracing new identities and embracing new passions. And I wish I had known that when I was in high school because I think I would have spent more time doing other things I liked that may not have fit into the category of musician, but that might have been really fun and really awesome for who I was as a person. I took a little stab at writing the beginnings of what could be a song. Bear with me, it's probably been four or five years. It might be a little rusty. You are good to me. You are good to me. Even when I've lost my sense of purpose, you are good to me. You are What are you doing? This is our maple tree. It is not a cat tree. I would tell my younger self not to worry so much about perfecting things and doing everything just right. When I was growing up, 
I had a highly perfectionist attitude came out in mostly schoolwork because that was where it was most prevalent but it's something that has stuck with me through a lot of my adult life um, but as I've gotten to the farm and worked on this property it's something that I've had to adjust and realize that sometimes just getting something done is good enough and that it doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be exactly to the spec of your dreams. There really is no perfect right? Yeah, there really isn't. And there's there's such a, a breadth of topics and things that you need to learn about and know about living on a property or a homestead. And there's really a case of you being a jack of all trades, but a master of none kind of scenario. We have a lot of different skills and proficiencies in different things, but we're not an expert in any one single thing. So we can do a lot, but there's still areas where we'll fall short to some degree. So it's just learning to be, to accept that, to be okay with that and realizing that there isn't there's no one holding me to that standard, it's only myself. So that standard is somewhat arbitrary and it's not important. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we would never get the projects done, really, around the farm if they had to be perfect. So you could spend your whole life learning about all this stuff and never actually doing it. Yeah, absolutely. You can paralyze yourself by planning and by fear of not knowing how to do something. Sometimes the best way to learn and the best way to succeed and to just you know, be satisfied with, with life as well as to just jump into things and start new things and learn as you go. Yeah, how much research did you do on maple syrup topping, babe? Me? Not all that much. <laughs> so sometimes there's a degree of like, just try it out and, and assess your risk. Like a tree, like we're not gonna hurt this tree by tapping it. Obviously, you don't wanna jump into a project like caring for animals when you don't know anything about that animal. It's not to say that striving for quality is a bad thing by any means, but perfectionism at its core just causes so much unnecessary stress and anxiety in our lives. Who is really holding you to that standard of perfection? It is yourself and likely on the outside people are going to be so amazed at what you've done so you might as well be amazed at it yourself because that's your work and it takes time and effort so if you're always holding yourself to the standard of perfection you're not going to be able to enjoy the results yeah which aren't going to be perfect but they're going to be pretty darn awesome so let's head to our next tree i mean this tree was, this tree was pretty dead wasn't it One, yeah so it probably wouldn't be a bad candidate to try who who culture garden out on a sugar culture Jump and hold. Attack the snow. Message. So we are here in our little woods. We are, whoops, I dropped my glove. Ooh, trying not to get stabbed by sharp pointy things. But we found like at least 10 maple trees. So that's kind of cool. So maybe we can make all of our own maple syrup and make it for friends and family. Another thing you probably know about us at this point is that we are plant-based. So our diet is mostly based on fruits and veggies. And the reason I bring this up is because growing up, I had these, these convictions on my heart, these things that I wanted to do and felt like I should do, but I didn't do it because my parents weren't doing it or my friends weren't doing it or others around me were living quite differently. I kind of was more like go with the crowd and mentality. As an adult, I'm really learning to embrace those callings even if they go against what others might expect or others might be doing. When I was 16, I became vegetarian. I would have done that much sooner if I felt like I could. I could just be me. So something I would tell my younger self is to follow those intuitions, those convictions, and those callings. Well friends, thanks for taking the time to spend 10 minutes with me today. I love having you a part of our journey, a part of our story, and a part of our Sunshine Farm family. What is one thing you would share with your younger self? Comment below, let me know, and I can't wait to read all about it. Thank you to Lorella for starting this whole thing in the beginning. It was so fun to be a part of, and I'm really grateful to share more of our story with you guys. In case you didn't see enough cats outside, here are some more really adorable snuggle cats. Adventure cats outside, snuggle cats inside.